And uh, today, one of the uh, we see one of Jesus' several I am statements. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And he's inviting us to connect with him. He invites us to abide with him. In our epistle reading from John, 1 John, it correlates confessing that Jesus is the Son of God with experiencing and coming to trust in the love God has for us. A love that includes if coming in baptism as the body will be baptized this morning. And abiding in Jesus means to understand that we belong to him. The relationship of abiding in Jesus himself is love, was experienced by the Ethiopian Enoch in uh, first reading this morning when Philip told him the good news about Jesus and the Ethiopian was baptized too. So I pray today that we come to be connected to the vine. Because that's what Jesus says, I'm the vine and you're the branches. We've looked at this theme many times already in this past year because it's the theme of our school year. But today we look at it again because it is a sign lesson for today. So we welcome you and we pray God's blessings upon this day. And we stand the same rock of ages. Jesus, by his authority, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated, and we sing the hymn, Morning Cry As We Prepare to Bring the Morning Blaze to Be Baptized. Crucified. 
hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark specifically. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased, and he said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. And surely I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands on them and blessed them. Let us now rise and proclaim the faith into which the money will be baptized. This morning we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. We speak together. I believe in God the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the heaven, and the King of the Lord. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Max Lord is not here. He will be here today. So, Darlene, I ask you as the mind's mother. Is it your desire that she be baptized into the Christian faith as we have here proclaimed? So say yes. yes. Darlene, God commissions Christian parents to bring up their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Holy baptism must be followed by holy training. You as Samani's mother have that primary responsibility to a sister to appreciate and understand her baptism just like you have with your two boys. And I ask you, will you keep her in contact with the words and promises of God and by your words and example, bring the money up in the faith and life of Christ. We shall say yes with the help of God. Yes. Jerry yes, sir. and Marais, you want to say that name? You have been asked to be the, the Christian sponsors for this beautiful child. You're to remember the money in your prayers and a, a reminder of her baptism, its meaning and privileges and responsibilities. And as you have opportunity, assist in bringing her up in the faith and life of Christ as you proclaim, especially if something should happen to her parents. And are you willing to do so? So say yes with the help of God. Yes. With the help of God. Let's rise, the congregation. You have a big responsibility, too, as a family of God. And today, our acceptance of this new life Christ lays upon us as a Christian congregation the obligation to assist the body in her Christian training and provide for her an ongoing program of word and sacrament and Christian fellowship. So you do you, the congregation of the children of God, promise to welcome Kamani and celebrate and nurture a new life among us, if so say yes with the help of God and with joy in our hearts. Yes, with the help of God and with joy in our hearts. And together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Christian day school during their great kids and we are blessed. 
But Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, and I'll go before you. But he also says, I want you to be lights. And to money, you have a challenge. Not a challenge, but God says, I'm going to go with you. Now be my life. Be a light for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we, I will give that to you, Jerry. And so we pray. Almighty, most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you once again have graciously preserved and extended your church to have granted the money, the new birth, and all the baptism. And may we remember of your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We only pray that as she now has become your child, that according to all your good pleasure, she may faithfully be brought to lead a godly life, the praise and honor of our, your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the final, final promise, the inheritance in heaven. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And here is your, you can blow that out right now. And here's your baptismal certificate and your baptismal certificate. And you can take your seats. Thank you. Spirit, 
but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world, and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <coughs> Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will even be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. And neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. And such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated and we we'll invite the children to come forward for their children's message. <laughs> Grapes. And what do grapes grow on? Tree. 
Now vines, they grow on vines. And and what is and those bunches have to grow close to the vine because if they don't, what's going to happen? They won't grow fruit. They won't grow fruit or they'll break off, won't they? And and so we have to do it. Now what happens if one of those grapes falls off the back, off that bunch of grapes as and it gets in the sun? What's going to happen to it? Well, you can eat it, but what are <laughs> It's going to dry up and look like what? A uh, raisin. Now, do you like raisins? No. No, I don't either. I like grapes, but I don't like raisins unless they're in oatmeal cookies. They're sweet. Yeah. But then they're sweet. Well, Jesus this morning is talking about vines and grapes and everything because that's what happened. In the country we lived, there was vineyards all over the place, and people knew all about it, and they knew all about grapes. And if the grapes are not connected to the vine, they're going to die. And so we want to make sure he that he's using himself now as the image of a vine. And he says, if you don't stay next to me, if you don't stay connected to me, you're in big trouble too. We need to stay close to Jesus. And as we stay close to Jesus, the story tells us, tells us one more thing. You know what it told us? We're going to bear fruit. The vine bears fruit. As it's been, uh, branches bear fruit, it's connected to the vine. And we are the branches. And as we're connected to Jesus, we're going to bear fruit. Now, what kind of fruit are we going to bear? Apples and oranges and pineapples? Is that the kind of fruit that's going to do? What? Yeah, here we are. Look, let's read them together. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, patience, gentleness, self-control. Those are the kinds of fruits that we're supposed to produce. The fruits that will help others. And the fruits that share Jesus. And in the process, where does all that come from? Does it come from us? Or who puts that love and peace and joy in us? Who puts that in Jesus? Jesus does, yeah. So he's the vine and we are the branches. And he wants us to grow in him. And that's why I'm so excited this morning with all you here. He's going to have lots of fruit because you're going to all produce fruit because Jesus loves you and you love Jesus and he lives in your hearts. So let's pray. And repeat after me. Dear God, you are the vine of life. Help us stay connected to you. And we are your branches. And help us bear spiritual fruit. And to share with others who are around us your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Give yourselves a big hooray! seats and we sing this beautiful song, Great Are You, Lord.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends. Amen. We are a culture that is obsessed with staying connected. We have our cell phones and streams and Zooms and Instagrams and text messages and every other website. And it's just overwhelming, isn't it? Even GPS trackers now. I got a phone call from my neighbor on Friday afternoon. He says, quick, go to my yard. Are you home? I said, yeah. He says, they're stealing my jet ski. I have a GPS on it. So I run, look over the fence. It's not being moved, it was just the wind blowing the, the thumb <laughs> over there. But he's had two, two, two stones in the past, so I would understand what he was going through. But stay connected. In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus tells us this illustration, the story of a vine being connected to the branches. And it brings about how important it is to have a vital connection to him. We need to be connected to Jesus in order to produce results. A few months ago, as I said, this theme has been running through our school year. It's a school theme program. But I asked this question. I ask it again today. Do you have a vital connection with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I can't answer that question for you. And you can't answer it for me. It's a personal question. Are we connected? And it's a crucial question because Jesus says here, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. So as we approach this lesson today, I want to share with you some thoughts. And first of all, three very important points that just kind of jump off the page to me. The first one is, that apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Can't get much simpler than that, can What do you mean we can't do nothing? Well, apart from Jesus, nothing we do has a lasting or permanent or eternal value. Oh, people do lots of things today, but are they accomplishing what truly was what has lasting value that the Lord has established? So what really is the most important thing? Let's think about that. We said it. We say it this way many times. The only main thing, the most important thing, is to keep the main thing the main thing. It's all about Jesus. If it's not about Jesus, we're in trouble. And it's got to be putting first things first. And Jesus wants to be first in our lives. And so now, apart from me, you can do nothing. And I like this meme that next. It says, apart from me, you can do nothing. What part of this do you not understand? What the, why, do, why do we have such a big problem with it? But there's another lesson within this lesson. And that is that many Christians attempt very little because they dwell within themselves. Never realizing the power that's been attached to us as we attach ourselves to the vine, and thereby never accomplishing all that God has planned for us. We need to understand this, that our source is our secret, but our source is also our strength. We have the ability of fruitful living, not because of just the source, but also the care that's been given to us. Just as the source, is the, as Jesus is the source, the Father is the gardener. And what is the root here is that the God, the Father God, not only cares for the vine, but he actually owns it. And that's why John 3.16 is so wonderful. Let's read it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him will have eternal life. This is so important because we as branches not only have Jesus as our vine, but we also have the Father who cares for us and prepares us for fruitful living. And there's a difference between having a good resource and owning something. A person who owns something takes care of it and has pride in it. 
A week ago, Friday, I did something that I've been wanting to do for 20 years. I attended the Barrett Jackson auction, auto auction in West Palm Beach. We're a couple slides behind, I think. What's going on up here? Black slide, then the next slide. There we go. Amazing event if you've ever been in one like this. And um, amazing cars. Muscle cars that I grew up with some 50 years ago. Every color, every style, there's a 56 Nomad right there. And, but uh, well, there's one car that just kind of stood out for me. Next slide, please. <laughs> Looks like a pile of junk, doesn't it? It's from the movie Joe Dirt. I never seen the movie Joe Dirt. But it, it's a superbird. And superbirds are cool. But I don't think I would want that in my driver. The amazing thing was, as the group I went with is, oh, that should go cheap. It wasn't cheap at all. It went for $330,000. More than our church budget. Or a pile of rust. It's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? And that's how God looks at each one of us. Next slide, please. As we look at each other, we see God, see people with flaws. We pick each other apart all the time, don't we? But God looks at us through the blood of his son, Jesus. And he sees us beautiful. He sees us sinless. He sees us as his precious children. You see, ownership makes a difference. And God owns us. We have to remember that. He doesn't look at us as an observer, but as an investor. And he invested a lot in us. Secondly, Jesus says, I'm going to prove you sometimes. We never liked this one so well, but he said, I'm going to be stretched you out in all kinds of different directions. I'm going to sometimes even fetch you back. And by doing that, you're going to produce fruit, more fruit, better fruit. And God is going to remove anything that hinders our usefulness. Did you know that productive people are constantly being proved? They're going through the process of God helping them to be more fruitful. And the thing about God is he knows exactly where to center in on our lives. And he knows those things that need to be extracted. Here's a picture of a, a log jam on a river up north. And loggers cut the, the, the shivers down and they go into the uh, river to go to the mill. But every once in a while there's a log jam. And that's a log jam. Now, a professional logger, what he's going to do is he's going to go and he's going to climb a tree and look at exactly where, where the bottleneck is at. And then he's going to go out and he's going to put a piece of dynamite in that place. And he's going to blow it up. And then everything starts moving flat fast again. That's what God does with us. That's what the gospel does. Next slide. Romans 1, 16. Let's read it together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God to bring salvation to everyone who believes. The key is that word power. In the Greek, I'm giving you a Greek lesson this morning. It's dynamis. Can you say dynamis? Dynamis. Now you know the Greek word. It's where we get the word dynamite from. And that's what God's word does. It blows us up, doesn't it? It changes our direction in life if we truly let the word work in us and it moves us. And God doesn't mess around with the peripheral. He goes right into our lives with his dynamite and removes those areas that are preventing us from being fruitful. He removes those sins that keep us from being the one he needs. And then thirdly, God instructs us all to remain in him. He doesn't say, would you like to be connected to me? He doesn't say, would you like to believe in me? He doesn't say, would you like to trust in me? No, he says, believe in me, remain in me. And I love this, this slide because it's the verses we 
said when remain comes, it depends on what translation you use. Sometimes it's 10 times and sometimes it's 12 times. But remain is the key word, word and you see it laid out right before you. And so that's why, next slide, we need to say connect with the blind in your life will be fine. Can you say that? Connect with the blind in your life will be fine. Kind of a cute little saying, isn't it? Connect with the blind in your life will be fine. And you always want to dance to it. And connect, that's the important word. It, it's, it's important that each of us needs to make sure we are connected with God, that we have a relationship with God, and that the greater the relationship, the greater will be our results. So how do we remain faithful to him? When we worship regularly, or in his word, or in his prayer, coming to the sacrament like this morning to receive his body and blood, to grow in his grace and grow in his forgiveness. We can look at this compared to the vacuum cleaner. Now that's a good looking vacuum cleaner. Got all the attachments and all the, the gadgets and gadgets, and, and that's a powerful vacuum, uh, vacuum cleaner. Even got an on and off switch. But that vacuum cleaner is not going to do any good until we do what? Plug it in. Here we are. The fifth Sunday of Easter, still celebrating the powerful resurrection of Jesus. And he stands before us alive after he died, perfect and glorious, after taking upon himself all the imperfections, the open sin of the world on himself. The sin has been paid for. Death has been conquered. And now he calls us to the very end of the age, and he says, believe. Believe and be saved. Receive your victory as your own, that you might not die. Take my death to sin and live for righteousness. He's the only power source for fruitful living. The only. He's the true vine, which comes, which comes, from which comes the vital sap branches needed to produce fruit. And he goes on to say, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine, and neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And if anyone does not remain in me, it's like a branch that is thrown away and withers, and such branches are picked up, thrown in the fire, and burned. Here Jesus warns Christians about being disconnected from the vine. And yet, we ourselves have disconnected walked away or disconnected ourselves from Jesus at times, and we all know people who have disconnected themselves from the lines. We've been experienced it. So how do we do it? What do we do? Being disconnected. What's done? Number one, it shows when some Christians need word and sacrament for time and the guilt begins to build a pile. And staying away for a while only makes it worse. Once they had heard that what it meant when Jesus said, it is finished on the cross. But now they're wondering, does God still love me? And they stay away longer and longer. And pretty soon, they're trying to please God so he'll bless them instead of following through. And they're tormented and guilt driven. And maybe you've been that person trying to live as a branch, trying to bear fruit without the vine. What did Jesus say to us today? He says, remain in me. Let my words remain in you. Listen to them, because my Father so loved you that he gave me up for you and for your benefit so that you could believe and not perish. Don't try to earn what you can't earn. But we have so many people trying to earn what they can't earn. Simply give thanks to the gift that God has given, and today we give Him praise to do that. Another way is we disconnect ourselves from the vine, also when we seek credit for what we do. Look what I do! No. It's never that way, is it? Maybe we get disappointed at times, frustrated at times, or the things that we've done, and nobody pats us on the back, nobody says, way to go, do it again. But what does the psalm say? It says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. It's not ours in the first place. And we're just to do what we're supposed to do and we're supposed to produce fruit. And that's why Jesus said, he says, I am the vine. In my great mercy and love, I supply you with every good and perfect gift for your body and soul. 
It is I who work in you to will and to act according to my purpose. It is I who have redeemed you with my blood so that you would be purified and be here to do what is good. So I hope this morning we see how precious the picture is of Jesus saying that he is the vine and we are the branches. And do you hear the great promise that is made that whoever remains in him, he will remain in you. And I hope you see Jesus' vision for you. All Jesus wants is for you and I to grow as, these, as a disciple. That's what he wants. He wants us to grow as a disciple. He wants us to be cultivated and pruned and corrected and trained in his word, encouraged by his washing and baptism, sharing the blessings of the test, but let's in his holy supper. Remain in he says. And why does he want that so badly for you and I to stay connected to him? Because he sees the fruits. He sees the branches that are completely satisfied. And what happens to branches that are completely satisfied? One, Jesus sees the fruit of a worry free life. Huh. Someone who says, let me tell you about my vine. My vine meets all my needs. My vine delivers me from evil and sends his angels to watch over me wherever I go. My vine never leaves me, and he sits at God's right hand. Can you see that? Have you said that? Are you seeing that? Secondly, Jesus sees the fruit of strength and confidence. And the branches are saying, I'm a branch to the vine. Of what crime can Satan accuse me? Death, where is your sting? You can't touch me now. And if I live, I live in the vine. And if I die, I die in the vine. So whether I live or die, I belong to the vine. And will be with him forever. And thirdly, Jesus sees the fruit of love and service to your neighbor. My vine has paid my great debt of sin. He has canceled it and forgiven me. What, shall, what a small thing it is for me to forgive my neighbor, to turn the other cheek, to endure all things at the hands of my neighbor or even enemy so that you might see the love that I have found in the body. What a small thing it is to wash my neighbor's feet. What a small thing it is to put my neighbor's needs ahead of my own. What a small thing to have compassion. So don't thank me for my service or my love to you. I'm the one thanking you, my vine, for giving me the strength to do just that. What a vine we have. His name is Jesus. What perfect fruits he causes in us to live. And it's all there to remain in him. Talking about a message that is not only applies to our life, it is our life. It is our everything. And all I want to do is to be connected to the vine because when I'm connected to the vine, we can all say I'm the richest person alive. When I'm connected to the vine, I'm the most blessed person in the world. Now and in eternity, I, all I want to do is to be a fruitful branch so that God may be praised, His love may be seen, His power may be known. Whatever I'm doing, whether it's painting a wall, grabbing the floor, mopping, doing the laundry, washing dishes, washing windows, yeah, changing a diaper, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it to glorify my Lord and Savior Jesus. And, and, I, and, and anything I can do with my hands and my feet and my mouth, it's all for him. And that's why since verses, this first Corinthians 10 is important. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of our God. No matter what we're doing. We go to Colossians 3.17. It says, and whatever you do, in word or deed, or do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to do this. And Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before me, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Nothing else remember this this morning. God doesn't want us to be busy. He wants us to be fruitful. You and I have a thousand opportunities daily to do something in the name of Jesus. And the only encouragement we get is Jesus' words to this morning that says, Remain in me and you will be blessed. So we start with this question Do I have a vital connection to Christ Jesus? 
Again, it's personal. I can't do it. But I think the answer is yes. Yes, I have a vital connection to Jesus. I have a vital connection to baptism, just like the Lani this morning. I have a vital connection to his body and blood. I have a vital connection as I worship and commune and encourage one another here. Yes, always yes. Yes, this morning. And so because of that yes, we can say connect with the vine, your life will be fine. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of Christ which passes on human understanding keep our hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Receive the Son of Holy Spirit as we bring our offerings to the Lord. The offering plates are before you and bring your gift as you choose.
Heavenly Father, you have grafted us into the vine of your Son, pruning us and cut off from us all sin and dead works, that we may always draw light from your Son and produce the fruits of faith and good works. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, your only Son came in the flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. Protect us from all false teachings and the spirit of the Antichrist, that we may always confess Christ to be our only true God and remain faithful to him. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, teacher of all truth, guide teachers and all students in your word, and we thank you for, and for that opportunity that exists each and every day through our Christian day school here. So help us that we may um, all increase in understanding our, in faith and love for you, the lamb led to the slaughter in our place, and we all risen from the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, give health and guidance to our president and all in authority, that they may serve honorably and in accord with your good order. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We come to, to you today, thank you for the gift of prayer and the prayer challenge that you have placed before us in this month of April. For the awareness of how fast your kingdom is and the ministry you have called each one of us to be a part of. And this week we have prayed for one another, and especially those who remain on our prayer list. We come praying for the lost, those who have not remained in you, and those that don't know that you are their mind and the life that comes from you. We lift up our leaders in this church, from small groups to Bible studies to those making decisions for the future of this ministry. And today we pray especially for the voters meeting that will happen following the service and for the issuing of a call for a pastor to serve us. We also thank you for the business of operating this ministry and for the finances that are needed to operate this mission to glorify you. And we thank you for the Lutheran's Women Missionary, missionary League and the love and work they do to share the gospel message. What a beautiful week of prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Remain in us, O Lord, that we may remain in you and care for those in need, the hungry, the wounded in body and spirit, the grieving and those with special needs. We pray for those who travel, especially today we lift up our junior high students and faculty and parents who are taking an, an educational trip that begins this afternoon around the state of Florida. Please protect their travel. We pray for the lonely and the afflicted, for those who suffering from addiction and those needing healing. Especially today, we lift up Joyce Brosh as she remains hospitalized, Pastor James Leggett as he's in hospice care, Susan Franklin as she continues her battle, Davina Bino, who has also been hospitalized, John Morris fighting cancer, Noel Peterson, Will Francis who had bone marrow plant, transplant and waiting and we're praying for a cure of his cancer, Daryl Hackmark Jr., Manny Rivero, Zion, Dean Thompson, Dennis Plant, Shannon Penland, Dan Davidson, David Pino, Tim Sprinkle, Winston Benjamin, Maggie Hoffman, Clifford and Pat Ricks, and all that we name before you in our hearts. Restore their health with the overflowing abundance that comes only from your hand. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we come before you today thanking you for the, your love given to us that allows us to love one another. And today we celebrate a young couple's love, Michaela Oxer, who became engaged to Scott this past week on her birthday. Be with Michaela and Scott as they began planning their lives together as husband and wife, connected to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And today, Lord, we thank you for our faithful servants who let their light shine. And we today lift up Daniel as she is retired from the North Police, the North Miami Police Department after more than after 30 years of service. A faithful servant and a light for you in all circumstances. Be with the Neil and Larry as they take the next few weeks to travel and see your amazing creation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Hear and answer our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, the, and your saints shall bless and your saints shall bless you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The table's been set in this, and the Lord invites us to come. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, 
that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. And therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we long to magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
this body and blood, strengthen and preserve your true faith in the life of us to be part of peace. Amen. Amen. We pray, O oh God, the Father, the Father, the source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent his only begotten Son to the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So if I go up into the heavens, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, on the the even there your hand will guide me. And that is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to his people and life to those who walk on it, I, the Lord, have called you into righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and I will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Thanks be to God, our name. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated and just a couple of brief announcements. Lord's meeting immediately following the service, so at about uh, 5 after 12, I guess, we will be about 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And as soon as you get settled, come back in for those who are voters, and you'll sign the voting sheet, and we'll go around to the meeting. Next, Mother's Day breakfast will be here uh, on Mother's Day, which is Sunday, May 12th. So don't forget it, guys and children. And uh, from 9.15 to 10.15 in the guild room. And more information will come out next week. Open house for our school this Thursday, May 16th uh, at 6.30 in the evening. And uh, the fun part was this week, one of our members said, I sent out invites to some people. And guess what? They said they're coming. Let's all send out invites. And let's give, that doesn't mean they're going to sign up, but let's invite them to see what we got. We all know somebody that has kids. Look at all the kids here today. We've got to do that. And, uh, and then the class of 2024, please contact Kimberly with the names of those who will be graduating from middle school, high school, or college. We'd like their names on May 19th so we can recognize them and do something special for them. Any questions? Okay, I think we've got it all. <coughs> Remember, voters meet right after here. Uh, greet the people and then come back in so we can call pastor. Let's stand as we close with our mighty Savior.
excited about calling a pastor. I just want to get to that meeting. But we have many guests with us today. Pastor Tino, Elisa, and Gavin, and our husband, and family. And we to hear that. And, uh, and uh, Gavin Butcher here. I don't know if but we, we're welcome back. It's great to see you. It's been, you've been done, what, two years? Four years. Four years. <laughs> Five years ago. And from the great Darlene and your amazing family that supports you and friends. And I'm going to And we're so good to have that. And then our new friend back there, so, and I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Jesse. Jesse. And so, he says, someone invited me to the church and I came. See what happens? Thank you, Jesse. So have a blessed day. You can tell them love of Christ and get confirmations going on in Luke 14. And uh, say hi to your eyes and we'll start in here in about 10 minutes. <laughs>